20th century urban development models. We have to think again, we have to plan again, we have to start again. We have to go back and fix what we've been left to. You know, there's a saying in our country, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But we think it's broken, so it needs to be fixed. And it needs to be fixed urgently, because each new development that goes up is another development without any green infrastructure associated with it. This is one area close to the city. Um, this is the main CBD. We have botanical gardens here, Hyde Park. We have uh, one central park here. So it's an area where there's a lot of activity. So what we've been doing is developing this area. We have Darling Quarter with 3,000 residents and 1,700 people coming to work. We have the Central Railway where 120,000 commuters get pushed into this area each day, which are funneled off into the sea. We have Chinatown with 16,000. Uh, we have UTS, which is a university, 80,000 students frequenting this area. The Ultimo, the people that live in this area, 7,000. One Central Park has 2,500 residents and 5,400 workers. So it's a lot of people moving in this area. So we can't have cars in this area. We're using the infrastructure, the, the, the rail infrastructure, and there's been a new line here. This used to be an old railway line. It's now called the Woods Line, which is a pedestrian area for bikes and pedestrians to move down to the harbour, into this new green space from the main transport mode. So it's opening up. We've got a new Frank Gehry building here. So these are some of the areas that are changing. This is the Darling Quarter area. We'll just zoom down into here. And we have more green space. More space for people to come and use while they're in the city. Table tennis, um, jogging areas, bike areas, easy access for bikes, for commuters. All pedestrian, trying to eliminate cars. Another park that was an English design, a uh, design in 18th century, um, yeah, 18th, 18th century, um, 1890. We've added swing pools, uh, a green roof around the swing pool, new landscaping, um, new wetland up here underneath these trees, new bar tennis courts, basketball courts, and this will join onto another green infrastructure section coming further up here in the next five years. Using natives, this is the Goods Line, which is an old railway line modeled on the Highland in, in New York, the High Line in New York, where pedestrians, um, students can use during the day, come down, have lunch, walk from the main transport node, the railway section, down to the harbour. Sorry, that's the great uh, Frank Gehry building if you're interested in architecture. It's kind of, his concept was a, a brown paper bag crushed up and squashed. And he did it with bricks. It's quite an amazing building. So yeah, we're giving giving space in the city back to the people to use. One Central Park um, has also opened up a suburb um, quite close to One Central Park, which is all here, was was kind of isolated by these major traffic roads. And the people in there had no green space. So with One Central Park, there was a park developed at the back here, which now has opened up many community activities into this suburb. It's revitalized this whole suburb through here called Chippendale. And there's uh, fates, festivals, markets on the weekend. If we zoom down into here, this is a, a restaurant area with landscaping. It's called King's Gardens. Um, this is Patrick's green wall panel, uh, I think one month ago, looking very healthy. Um, it's a it's three-part system, planters, climbers, stainless steel, high tensile climbers, and Patrick's vertical garden system here. Uh, even the shopping center has green. Um, there's reflectors from the top of the building that reflect sunlight down into the skylight, into the interior of the shopping center. So, what we've found that by 2030, if we reduce the grey area of the inner city from 96.5 to 83%, we can increase the green area 
from 3.5% as it is now to 17%. The outcome of this will reduce the inner city temperature by 4 degrees. It will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by reducing energy consumption. It will improve human well-being and health. It will improve urban diversity, creating new habitat and buildings. It will improve stormwater quality and management, going back into our beautiful harbour. And will improve our ecosystem services. I think that's about it. Um, I welcome you as green warriors. Um, fight hard. Let's move this planet forward. Let's save this planet. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.